Hello. In this video, I'm going to be going through a worked example related to the learning outcome. Describe the behavior of springs and understand Hooke's law. Part of the review for students going through all of their ACE physics coursework. This comes from ACE physics syllabus code 9702, paper 11 from May, June 2013. It's question number 23. It reads, a number of identical springs, each having the same spring constant, are joined in four arrangements. A different load is applied to each arrangement. Which arrangement has the largest extension? And so this question is really about putting springs in series, like we see in A and B, and putting them in parallel, like we see in C and D. And you can see that a different uh, load, right, two newtons, one newton, six newtons, eight newtons, sort of a different amount of weight, is being suspended from each one of those spring arrangements. And our job is to sort of say, like, if we were to set this up in the lab, you know, which one of these is going to go down sort of the furthest here. All right, let's remind ourselves of Hooke's Law, which says that the force on a spring is equal to the spring constant times the extension. And I'll use x here for extension. So really, we can kind of tie our thoughts to, to this equation. Um, I'm going to kind of go over different ways to, to sort of think about this question because we're not um, sort of on a time crunch right now. We've got all the time in the world to just sort of say, well, how would I sort of go about solving a question like this? And what if I, you know, it, you know are, are there different ways to sort of approach it that would sort of get me out of trouble if I begin to think about something and, you know, maybe I forget the equations or things like that. So let me first say that there's a very sort of uh, formal mathematical way to go about solving this. And that is um, with equations about how do we think about um, what is like the spring constant of, of both of these springs together. And let me just kind of sort of, you know, walk through the concepts here. So if you have one spring and we put a force on it, we know it's going to extend. All right. But if we have two springs, we can kind of think about it as, well, this is the same force that's sort of being applied to each one of them. And so each one of these springs is going to extend. And so if we apply the same force, if we keep the force sort of constant, what's going to happen to the extension? Uh, if we put like two springs in series like this, if we just sort of link them together, well, we're going to get more extension. And so if this stays the same, but this increases, well, then we need this to go down in order to sort of keep that force constant, right? We're not adding any more weight than two newtons. And so that's one way to kind of think about um, just more qualitatively, well, what's going to happen to the spring constant of the entire arrangement, of the entire system, if you will, um, as we add springs either in series or in parallel, okay? So this question really is a good worked example to kind of walk through those concepts, um, you know, we when we study electricity, we know that there are equations for resistors in series and parallel, and for capacitors in series and parallel. And really, we could kind of think about that much the same way for springs in series and in parallel. And so, if you're comfortable with that that way of thinking about it, then for both A and B, because we know that the spring constant is going to effectively decrease when we add springs in series, this number is going to go down for the entire arrangement um, because we're getting you know, more extension, sort of like each one of these springs is extended that constant force, that effectively means that the spring constant has decreased, then we can think about for systems that are in series, so for springs in series, we calculate the spring constant of the entire arrangement. So one over K for the entire arrangement is gonna be equal to one over K to the first one, K to the second one. And for us, 
all of these have the same spring constant, so we don't need to sort of distinguish between them, but we could sort of apply this more generally to sort of any arrangement of springs, even if they did have different values of k and they were perhaps known. Um, we can just kind of think about this as having the same value here. So we can apply sort of this way of thinking. Remember that you're solving for the reciprocal uh, spring constant for that entire arrangement when you sum those reciprocals there. And so here we can just kind of think about this one as like um, 1 over k plus 1 over k equals 2 over k. Well, that's equal to 1 over the arrangement uh, spring constant. And so if we take the reciprocals of that, then we can see that k is um, k over 2 or 1 half K. All right, and so that's for the entire arrangement. I'll just say A for arrangement. So by putting two springs in series, we've effectively halved the spring constant for that entire arrangement. And so what do you think is going to happen if we put, you know, three springs in series? Well, we just have plus one over k to the third, them all being the same. We could think about this one here as 1 over k plus 1 over k plus 1 over k equals 1 over k for the arrangement. And so if 3 over k is equal to 1 over k for the arrangement, then the arrangement spring constant must be 1 third k. And so now it's only a third as much. Keep in mind also that in addition to, to varying the number of springs that we've arranged, we've also varied the force here. So we'll have to sort of think about that also. But just in terms of calculating what is the spring constant for this entire arrangement, here's how we'd go about it for putting springs together in series. So suspending a load sort of um, from a number of springs that have all been connected together. But the other way that we could arrange the springs is to do it in parallel, right? Like we see in choices C and D over here. And so for springs in series, I'm sorry, for springs in parallel, we would have to think about it as, um, well, each spring is sort of sharing the, the burden of uh, supporting this load here, right? And so if we only had one spring, then there's going to be a certain amount of extension. But if this spring can get, you know, help from uh, its neighbor's spring here to help support this, well, then it's not going to have to extend as much. And so just kind of qualitatively thinking about it, we can say, well, as we put springs with the given spring constant uh, in parallel here, there's not going to be as much extension, right? So for just a constant force, we start adding springs together in parallel we're going to get um, less extension, right, for that arrangement. And so if we keep this the same and the extension is going to decrease, well, then the spring constant has to increase. And so as we begin to add springs together in parallel, like we see here, all these springs are in parallel with each other, um, because this extension is going down, the spring constant for the arrangement must increase. And so we add the springs in parallel in such a way so that the arrangement spring constant is just the sum of all of the spring constants that we have in our system. And once again, because we have in, in our specific example here the same spring constant, we can easily just think about this arrangement for choice C as having the arrangement um, spring constant, the spring constant for that entire system as being k plus k or 2k. And for choice D here, we could think about that arrangement spring constant, the spring constant of that entire arrangement of springs, three springs in parallel as being 3k, k plus k plus k. And so now we know what the spring constants are for the entire arrangement for each of the choices. That coupled with Hooke's law and sort of the values of force here, we could calculate what the extension is for each one of these and then sort of choose the answer that way. And so what's that gonna look like? We'd have the extension 
is equal to um, force divided by the spring constant for the entire arrangement. And so we've reorganized Hooke's law here to make the extension the subject. And now we can substitute in for each one of our choices A, B, C, and D, and just see which one gives us the biggest value, the largest extension there. Let's go ahead and work through that together here. We've made it this far. All right, so the force for part A is two. Uh, I'll, I'll sort of drop the units here since we sort of know that all the units are consistent. And then we said that the effective uh, spring constant for that arrangement is one half K. And so here, if I substitute in sort of one half K two divided by a half, well, that's the same thing as like um, the extension is four over K. So there's our extension for choice A. For choice B, we've got the spring constant for the arrangement one third K. And so likewise, we can calculate X equals, here we have a one Newton force. So it's force over the arrangement there. And we have a one Newton force divided by one third K is the arrangement um, spring constant for choice B. So one divided by one third is the same thing as an extension equal to three over K. For choice C, again, we apply Hooke's law, X equals the force divided by the spring constant for the arrangement. For choice C, remember we calculated the spring constant for the arrangement to be the sum of the two springs in parallel, so 2K. So we get a six Newton force divided by 2K. Oh no, I said I was gonna clean up the calculation by sort of dropping the units there. So six divided by 2K is the extension here. Six divided by two is three. And so the extension is uh, three over K, same as B. And so right away we kind of know, well, if you put a one Newton force on three identical springs, it will extend just as much as if you increase that force six times and put those springs in parallel. And so that sort of conclusion there isn't immediately obvious just by inspecting it. You know, and if you could really set up in the lab, you could maybe sort of uh, measure that or even, even see that. Um, but here we've kind of, you know, shown why. So that's kind of cool, right? And then part D here, likewise, we're using the same equation here with an eight Newton force. And so we've got uh, the forces eight, and we have our effective spring constant. Uh, the arrangement of all the springs together there was three K for that example. So we have eight over three K, which um, doesn't simplify any, any sort of better than that. And so we have to kind of now think about each one of these answers and, you know, one sort of thing to do here is to say, well, it's the same constant. What's a con sort of convenient number here. Don't choose zero class, but what, let's just say it's one. So, um, but, but you could choose any value and you'll be able to show that, you know, a, a is the correct answer here. You're going to get the largest extension when you substitute a value in here, um, for K where, for example, four divided by one is four, three divided by one is three, three divided by one is three, and eight thirds is still less than um, the four that we started with over here, right? And so there's a very mathematical sort of way to approach this, and it, and it took a while to sort of go through the explanation, but once you had all of this in mind, you'd be able to work through these calculations um, pretty readily. Let me sort of show you a different way to think about this. Um, that may, like I said, sort of get you out of trouble if, you know, all of these sort of equations weren't the first thing that, that came to mind here. Indeed, uh, relating sort of what we know about electricity, and if, if you're very familiar with that and the equations for, for example, this, this should look familiar to students that are um, adding resistors in parallel, right? So if it's resistors in parallel, then, then we sort of sum the reciprocals this way, right? But if you just kind of think through the physics that we did uh, a moment ago, then it makes sense as to why when we put springs in series, we're actually decreasing sort of their value. All right, and so you could kind of think about it like, what if I put a two Newton force on a spring right here? Okay, how much would that spring extend? 
and just choose really convenient numbers for yourself. So it's a two Newton force. Let's just make our spring constant one like we did down here. So it's the same, you know, K equals one here. Let's calculate the extension just for like this spring. Say this spring right here, if we put a two Newton force on it. So we'd have two Newtons equals one times X. Um, okay, so what number does X have to be if we have a two Newton force here and this is one? So what number times one is two? Well, two. And so here we'd have two, let's just say centimeters of extension. So if we put this two Newton force and each one of these is a spring constant of one, we'd have two centimeters of extension. But if we did the same thing for this one, well, we'd also have two centimeters of extension there. So you could kind of think about it like with this example, where um, K equals one and for a given force, let's just calculate the extensions and just kind of think about it like that. And so here we'd have like a total extension of like four centimeters, all right? Here we have a one Newton force. And again, it's acting on our, our one, uh, you know, Newton per centimeter um, spring constant here. And so we'd have one centimeter of extension if we put this one Newton on this spring, one centimeter of extension and another centimeter of extension. And so we'd see that the total extension is three centimeters. It agrees with our conclusion down here. Now here it gets a little bit trickier, but we could still kind of think about it as like, well, if I have a six Newton force acting on one spring, it would extend it, what, six centimeters. But I'm sort of sharing that burden, right? And so not it's not gonna go all six centimeters. It's only gonna go, you know, with two springs, half of that. And it's easy to just kind of qualitatively just kind of hold those numbers up in your mind and say, well, here we kind of get like an extension of three centimeters, be half of that. You could also kind of think about it as, well, it's kind of like I've divided this uh, weight into two equal parts here. And so a three Newton force on this one Newton per centimeter spring, spring constant would extend it three centimeters. So you kind of think about each one sort of individually. Now here is where it gets a little bit trickier to, to kind of think about that, but indeed the same kind of thinking still applies here. Well, on one of these, I'd have eight centimeters of extension for eight Newtons of force, but I've got to divide that eight centimeters of extension amongst the three springs here that are each sort of sharing in the burden of supporting that load. And so you'd get an extension here of eight thirds of a centimeter, right? Which you could see even with sort of these examples here, you'd still arrive at the correct value A. And this is perhaps a more um, readily available sort of train of thought, but it's good to, to be able to think about it sort of in both ways and to really be able to connect how both of those ways are, of, of thinking lead us to the correct answer. And they're really kind of the same, just sort of different ways of approaching it.